Well, hello, hello, hello. This is Reza RCG Creations. How are you? Today we're making chicken and dumplings. Mm. <laughs> I've never done it before. Honey here, hubby here is cutting up the chicken. He went ahead and, was, and boiled it, got it all ready for me earlier today. I just got home from work and we're going to make this for supper. So you get two cups of all purpose flour, excuse me, self rising flour. And then you cut into it your shortening, which is, I'm looking at my recipe here, one fourth cup of shortening, one fourth cup, and on the pot that the chicken had cooked on earlier, uh, we've got the broth in there with a can of cream of mushroom soup. And uh, Hubby's just telling me he forgot to put the cream of mushroom soup in. <laughs> Sorry. It's on a simmer. So you let, just leave it on a simmer until your, until your dumplings are all ready. And then when they're about ready, turn it on to boil. Because you don't want to turn this on. You're, you don't want to put your dumplings in your bowling and your broth until... It's at a rapid boil. And then once you put all the dumplings in, then you turn it down to a simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I'm just I'm using a hand. This is a messy job. This is not clean, a clean job. Is right now I'm just mixing up the flour with the shortening. Because you want it to be all very, very crumbly. And I will bring this closer to the camera when I get to that stage. But right now, as you can see, I'm just mixing it up. It's all I'm doing. Okay, and of course, like usual, in the description box, I will put the, the entire recipe on how to do everything from beginning to end. And of course, the, uh, give you a taste test at the very end. And pictures of everything as it's going along. So, let me just kind of... Finish doing this. Let me mix this all up because this is going to take a little while and I'll be back in just a few minutes. Alrighty. Okay, I'm bringing you back because I'm going to show you what the flour and the shortening is supposed to look like. Okay. See it's all crumbly and stuff. Now we're going to add the milk which recipe calls for two-thirds cup milk just until you get like a pastry line in. So I'll bring you to that when I get to that point. Well, actually, you know, I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to, I'm looking to make sure you can still see. Okay. <clears throat> we didn't have any milk, so I made my own milk with in powdered milk. And you just add a little bit at a time. Because you may not need all of this. And you want to mix this in here till it's, till it's all combined. You don't want it sticky, but you also don't want it runny. Because remember, you want to roll it out. So it has to be... I know there's a word for it, but because I'm not a baker, I don't know what the word is. <laughs> See, and there it is. It's all mixing up. You see that? Okay. There we go. Now it's starting to shape, form and shape. Because we are going to have to knead it. You're going to have to roll it and knead it. And cut into it. About seven or eight rolls. And. Yep. See, it's starting to, starting to shape and form. I think I might need to add just a little bit of milk, just a tiny little bit. Because I want to get everything on the bottom of this to, we want it to all stay and mold together. See, it's, it's holding, but the whole thing's not holding together. Okay. Still a little crumbly. 
but at least it's holding and look see how it's taken away from my hand so that's good so I'm going to take most of this off so I can roll it all together make sure clean table clean tools clean hands we're working with food we're going to be eating this food And just work, work with it, work with it, until you're able to shape it into the a ball. See, and it's, start, it's starting to work. I'm going to add a tad more milk. And as you can see, it was very, very little milk that I poured in there. got it. See? You're just working with it, working with it, and working with it. It's still a little on the stiff, whoops, <laughs> tossed a piece of dough on myself. Okay. Actually, yeah, that is good. Alrighty, so I don't think I need to do any more. I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to add a little bit of flour. Excuse the reach. Let me move my flour over here. I'm getting all my little last pieces of dough from the pot. And this is where you definitely want to use two hands. And you pick it up and you move it. And you pick it up and you move it and you cut it into your I think this is the terminology from what I've seen in all the, the doing my research of this is what they call cutting it where you pick it up and you move it and you're cutting it you're cutting it into each other I think I'm gonna need a little bit more milk because it's not really pliable it seems to be breaking up just a tad Because you definitely don't want it sticky, but you want to be able to work with it like regular dough. It's kind of like making biscuits, but you're not making biscuits. Okay, I think this is a little bit better. I'm going to do this over here on the side. Oop, no, I don't want to do a bad idea. <laughs> Put this on my flower side. If you need to add more flour, then you add more flour to your table. That's like five, and this is like seven times this has come around. So we're pretty much done as far as the cutting into it, kneading it together. got a little bit of it still needs a little bit of moisture in there it just doesn't feel really pliable I'm just putting it on here with the milk spilled on the table and soaking it up Seems to be more, needs to be more pliable. You know what, I'm going to put more water, milk in the pot. Because you know, I did do exactly what the recipe said. And you wouldn't, they wouldn't want you to use this much milk if they didn't want you to use it all. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. Let me get my flower. I'll put a little bit up here. A little bit down there. I don't know if I said this, I don't remember, but this is my first time making this. And as you all know, if you've watched my videos in the past, I am my first time baker cooker. I mean, I've done it before, and my 60, I'm 60 years old now. But this is my first time actually going into it and doing it because I want to do it, not because I was forced to do it. You know, and when you're doing something that you like to do, it just seems to work out a lot better than when you're forced to do something. I'm sure everybody can relate to that. Okay. Now I think I got it. So, let me get my rolling pin. Where did I put it? And I'm going to roll it. And you want to roll it really thin. Oops. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. Okay. And since it's about ready, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my pot. I'm going to talk to you while the camera's still going. I'm putting my pot on hot. So we can start to boil. Because you don't want to add your dumplings to your pot until it's ready. I'm asking hubby to help me because I forgot to put the chicken in my hands are all grody. So I'm asking him to put the chicken, the cut up bite sized pieces of chicken. Let me show you. Bite up pieces of chicken and we're using chicken breast. I think the next time I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and get a, if this turns out good, I'm definitely going to make this again because this really isn't that big of an ordeal. And I'm going to do it with the whole chicken. Or some chicken thighs, because a lot of our homework said use chicken thighs, because the meat just tastes a lot better. Yeah, put it all in there and mix it up. And so... So it's rolling out okay. I'm not a good roller. You know, back in the day when I was in my early 20s, I used to make tortillas. They never were round. <laughs> they were all odd shapes. This little rolling pin I got in 1980. But see how good it is? Because it's hardly been used. <laughs> it just moved for me from house to house. Okay, so I'm just rolling now to get it thin. I want it thin because you do want it thin, thin, not paper thin. You don't want to be so thin that you see right through it. But you definitely, because remember, when it goes into the boiling water, it's going to, boil not boiling water, boiling broth, it's going to puff up. So you do want it pretty thin, but not extremely thin. And I'm pushing down as I'm rolling and stretching it out. I remember watching my mom and my grandma. I don't know how you do this without it taking apart and falling. So I'm just going to go this way. I need to go that way. I don't have more table this way. <laughs> I'm running out of table spot. I'm trying to get all this stuff out of the way, but I don't want to make a big mess than I already have. I told you this was a messy job. <laughs> get your, make sure you wear your apron if you don't want to get your clothes stained. I mean, it's not going to get stained because this is food. It'll come right out of the wash. Now I'm just going to make this part thin as much as I can. 
I'm, I'm almost right at the edge of the table. Okay. I gotta stand up because I'm running out of room. You want the, all the pieces to be pretty consistent in thickness. And I think I've got pretty good consistency on thickness here. Okay, I think I'm done with that. Now I'm just going to use the side of the fork. You want to do about like one inch to one inch strips. Oh, I forgot my plate. i got to get myself a plate to put all these in. Because as you cut them, you want to put them on a plate, and then from the plate you want to put it into the pot. You want to drop them into the pot one at a time until the whole pot is full. And then, see, so you get one little slice. And I'm just going to eyeball it. Like that one's a little too big. So I'm just going to eyeball it. There's some small dumplings. They're all variety. Remember, this is homemade. And then remember, this is my first time doing this. So now catch me in about 20 times of doing this on a regular basis. And we'll see what my technique looks like then. <laughs> So I'm just going to do this, and I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay, here's the plate of the dough. Here, here's a rapid boil. Okay, now he's going to drop. Hubby's going to help. Now go ahead and drop one at a time. Just keep on continue dropping. So he's going to continue dropping this whole thing. And while he does that, I'm going to wash my hands. And then I'll take you to the next phase. See how it's starting to float? See how they float? And that's what they're going to continue to float. I'll be back. Okay, my hands are clean. <laughs> okay, hubby's putting it. And you see how they're all starting to collect here? You want to not really push it. You don't really want to stir the dough too much. But you want to move them down. And then you want to stir from the bottom because you don't want it to scorch. So ever so often stir all the way to the bottom and stir it around. See that pieces of chicken? Our chicken's just falling apart. We use chicken breast. Chicken tenderloin. It was chicken tenderloin. Hubby corrected me. We, had chicken breast. we didn't have any chicken breast. He corrected me again. Right, honey? He ain't talking now. I don't want to be in the video. No comment. No comment. You heard him? No comment. Happy life. Happy life. It's just about done. Pouring in there. And then after this is done, we're going to put the lid on it. No. Take it off the rapid, the heat. Turn, turn down the heat. And then we'll let it put the lid on it, and we're going to let it simmer for 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, there's a hole right there. Okay, that is all of it. Okay, honey, will you turn it down to about 2? Make it to 2 at 2. Okay, there you go. Sorry I was moving the camera around. So I'm going to get my lid. I have to be careful because this lid's hot and I don't have no pot holder. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, this is going to sit for 10, 15 minutes and I'll bring it back. Then we're going to eat. Okay, here is the chicken and dumplings in my bowl. The broth is really good. I already had me a taste. 
There's a little bit of dumpling and chicken. And he, hubby, you put cream of mushroom soup in here, not cream of chicken? Cream of mushroom. He likes mushrooms, I do not. Good flavor. The broth is good. The chicken is good. Now let me have a piece of the dumplings. I'm going to get me a big piece. It's hot. Mm. The dumplings are doughy. I could think I put a little too much shortening because you can definitely taste the shortening in the dumplings. But they got a good texture of it. So, I would say this was a fail because the dumplings are not fantastic. Everything else is good, but the dumplings are not. So, I'm going to do a part two of this chicken and dumplings, and uh, but it's going to be a quick version, like less than five minutes. Of uh, I'm going to go get, I'm going to go to the store and get some uh, brand new, my jar of lard is, is at least two years old that I know of. So, I'm going to go get a brand new jar of lard. Shortening lard, I call it lard, Crisco, and try this again, and then I'll bring you at that phase and see what, how that was and how it turned out. So, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you the next video. Don't forget to hit like, share, and comment. Take care now. Have a good one. Bye bye. Hey, 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 this is Rosa. This is part two of the chicken and dumplings. Bear with me. I'm looking to make sure I'm in frame, and I am. Oh, you gotta get my notes on how to do everything. Okay, so you pour two cups of self rising flour, which we don't have any, so I made my own. And I will link a word right in the description box how to make your own. But basically, you, for every cup of all purpose flour, you add one and a half teaspoon baking soap powder. Excuse me, one and a half teaspoon baking powder and one fourth teaspoon of salt. And you just mix it up pretty well. So I'm mixing it. Whoops. <laughs> I'm messy. I do have the chicken on the stove boiling. It's cooking. And Hubby put it all together. He had the same seasonings he did yesterday. Boy, that's a mess. What I'm doing is I'm crumbling up the little big flakes of flour. Because I want to make sure it's all mixed up pretty darn good. I, um, I get the flour in bulk at Sam's. Oops, because I'm on my apron. And then I, I put it in my uh, mason jars and I vacuum pack it and then I store a whole a whole case of 12 jars. I do the little pint jars because we don't do a whole lot of cooking. And um, then I store them that way we always have it. Okay, so that's two cups of flour. Now we're going to add one fourth cup of shortening and let me show you. We went to the store today and we bought Crisco brand new. One, and I, because I really think shortening was a problem on yesterday's video. But I'm going to put both the videos together. It's going to be a little long, but I want to, it's going to be like a part one and part two, but on the same video. Because other, other than the lard, because I think that's it, it's really the only thing that's going to be different. Because yesterday I used my uh, several year old. We still can't remember how old it is, but we know for sure it's over two years old. Okay. Get that out of the way. Now I'm just going to, and I'm just going to use my fingers. You can use a pastry, uh, what do they call it? Uh, I'm reading my notes because I wrote it down. I don't have one of those. Okay. And a pastry blender. So I'm just going to use it. I'm doing this because this is how my mom did it. She didn't have a pastry blender either. Or you can always use, if you don't want to get your hands all yucky, just use two, uh, a fork. And all you're doing is you're wanting to cut the flour into the shortening. And don't use any more shortening than the recipe calls for. 
So the recipe calls for two cups of self-rising flour, one fourth cup of shortening or butter. You can do butter if you don't want to do shortening. And then two thirds cup of milk. Milk or water, but I think because of the for the dough, milk would be better than water, but it's up to you. Remember, this is your you're in your kitchen and you do what you want to do. But they do give you the options. Almost everything that I read when I was doing my research on this. Man, I got flour everywhere. And remember, I'm a newbie here. So all this is new to me. Okay, so it's pretty well incorporated, I think. All the shortening seems to be all in there. It's all over, and you, you do want it to look like it's all crumbly. And don't forget, get all the way down in the middle of the, of the bowl. Okay, now I'm going to add, add milk just until combined. Do not use buttermilk. And then you add the flour to the table. Okay, so I'm going to add most of my milk, but not all of it. I got my two, I had two thirds, so I'm down to about one third. Now I'm just going to incorporate the milk and the dough flour to make my dough. Okay. Looking good. I think the shortening was the problem because it looks a lot different than yesterday. And I'll bring the camera up to it in just a few when I get to this next stage. And so now we're just going to incorporate this. Bear with me one second. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to turn down the TV. Because I could hear it. It's really loud. Hubby's watching TV and doing chores while I'm doing this dumpling. Okay, so I pretty much used all of the milk except for that little bitty portion. See that right there? There's for the milk. I have not used that. I don't think I'm going to need it because it's, it's kind of sticky. And I'm going to be adding flour. So... Let me move my fork out of the way. And this was some flour that I had from yesterday that I already made. So I'm going to flour my table. Okay. And I'll put this on there. And I'm going to go ahead and get the little particles on the bottom. Move that out of the way. And it was a little sticky, but that was okay because I knew I was going to be adding flour from the table. I remember you want to kind of fold it and then refold it again. And you want to do this at least seven to eight times. And I'm, I'm assuming that's to make sure that it all gets mixed up well. No one, have everything that I was researching on Google and on YouTube, I couldn't find anybody that said why. So, I don't know why, I just know you do it. <laughs> as things go along, I'm sure I'll research. And then as I talk to my friends who are breakers, I'll find out. And definitely the texture from yesterday is a lot different. You notice how it's a lot more pliable. So, I do really think that it was the shortening, but I could be totally wrong. I really don't know. Okay, so that, I'm pretty sure, is seven. Let me do two more just to be on the safe side. Because I was counting as I was talking. Okay. So let me spread my flour. For this particular recipe, you want plenty of flour on the bottom and you want the flour on the top after. And I do this, remember this from my mom when she used to make tortillas. She always said, flour your rolling pan. So let me move this out of the way. Now I'm just going to roll this out.
Okay. I'm gonna move this around. You wanna roll this thin? And you, when you roll, you want to add a little pressure as you're rolling, so it stretches the dough out. Oh yeah, this is not near as big as yesterday was, which I'm sure is because of the shortening. There was so much... That shortening was old, and I think I put a little bit extra shortening because it just wasn't mixing right. But should have told me already that there was something wrong. But you'll live and learn. You know what? That's that's the one thing, good thing about cooking. And when you're crafting, pretty much when you do anything else, hey, if it doesn't work out, toss it. Or if you can bear to eat it, eat it. <laughs> we could not bear to eat those dumplings yesterday. And as it sat in the, because we were hoping to save the chicken and the chicken broth, because that it was really great flavor. It just got worse, because you could definitely taste the chicken and the, uh, the shortening in the broth. So we had to toss the whole pot. Which, that was a waste of money and time, but you know what? You, you gotta make, you have to mess up so you can learn. Because for some reason, I don't know why, if everybody's like this, but I am. When I mess up, I remember something a lot more than when I don't mess up. I'm not saying I don't mess up. I mean, I do mess up. But a lot of this also is just kind of like, when you if you have some little ones, have your little ones watch you do certain things. And tell them step by step what you're doing. And those who are really interested, like when mom... There was five of us kids. I'm second to the oldest. There's three girls and then two boys. I did never want to be in the kitchen. She'd be showing everybody how to do this and make this. and Uh-uh. I was like, no, not me. I was in my room uh, drawing and sketching. All I wanted to do was draw and sketch. I wanted to be a cartoonist when I was in high school. That's what I went to. So I went to college took two years of it and that was what I was going to do I was I did not want to be in the kitchen my idea of cooking was going out to order it <laughs> but you know you can't always do that number one it's not financially even if you have a lot of money it's not good old homemade you know exactly what's in it you know exactly who prepared it and unfortunately, how it is with the COVID situation, you have no idea if that person is already sick, but doesn't know that they're sick. But if they touched it or they breathed on it, is it spreading? Who knows? I mean, I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. I don't think anybody really knows. You know, they're just saying be safe and keep your social distance. Wear your mask. Okay, so I'm pretty much done, I think, on the rolling. But you look at that. It is like one-fourth the size of the other one. Well, no, but a little bit, about half. Because I remember it took this whole area here from yesterday's dough. But it looks like it's pretty thin to me. So I think I'm about done. My fingers are hurting from putting the pressure on this thing. Okay. So let's move that out of the way. Here's my little fork. And what I want to do is I'm going to pinch the edges of it. Just because I want it to be kind of conformed when I do my little strips. I'm going to use that bowl to put the... Oh, you know what? And it said sprinkle flour on top. That's what I, one thing I missed yesterday. She said put flour on both sides.
I actually took this from three different people on YouTube, this recipe. Three people who I have no idea who they are. I've never seen them. I just Googled chicken and dumplings and not even Google. I just put it in the search bar. Took notes on three different ones. I watched, I think it was like, oh, well, actually, you know, I don't even know how many it was. I'm going to be honest with you. But I watched every single one. And then I took notes on every single one. Okay. So now I'm just going to pinch the edges. So as I cut it and roll it, it gets a whole solid piece and not bits and pieces. Okay, so. And I'm just going to use the fork method. I like this idea. See, now that looks a little thick to me, but that's okay, because you know what? I'm going to see if I like the thicker pieces versus the thinner pieces. And you pretty much want them like one by one, but you know what? You work with whatever you have, because I, I, I don't... I don't know how to roll, so I don't do a nice little circle. Almost everybody I was watching, they did pretty darn good. It's like, ooh, ooh, someday when I grow up, I have more experience, I'll be doing good too. <laughs> Honey, would you put the chicken soup in the broth? Asking hubby if he would put the chicken soup in the broth while I'm doing this. Since I'm just about ready to add this to it. Okay, cut my little cut more strips. And we put it at about a seven so it could go back to a boil again because I'm just about ready to put the dough in. I had turned it down because I was busy making myself rising flour because I didn't have any, so that took up cooking time. And the little pieces, I'm just cutting them in here so they stay together as they cook. Oh, that's a little too big. just gonna separate these and then I'll be back okay here it is at a rapid boil the chickens already in there I'll show you well, let me get the piece. see the big old chunks of chicken and we used chicken breast it was fresh chicken breast we didn't use any frozen Yesterday's meal was included frozen chicken, so today we're doing fresh chicken to see if there's a difference. I don't know. Now I've got my little... Here is my dough. So I'm going to drop it in. Oops. Be careful, don't splash because it's hot. <laughs> And you want to lightly stir it to put the rest of the dough in. Actually, I'm going to use my left hand. I'm just going to slowly move these out of the way. Oh, they're already puffing up. Now we'll bring you up so you can see what, I'll, what it looks like. One of these days I'll get me a bigger tripod so you can angle from top see it and well, I'm going to show you when it's boiling there's usually an open spot and there's where you can drop your dough in until it fills up 
can see how thin it is and then see how thick it puffs up that was another thing that was different from yesterday it's a little bit more puffier but you want to drop it one at a time and then you're going to stir you're very gently stir in fact let me switch hands I'm a right-handed person very slowly stir try not to mess up the dough but you want to stir all the way from the bottom you're gently stirring all the way to the bottom so nothing scorches and you still want to keep this at a rapid boil okay I'm gonna hold the camera with one hand while I pop the other ones in because as soon as I pop them all in I'm gonna stir it one more time then I'm gonna cover it back again cover it back up set my timer this time I'm gonna set it for 15 minutes because I don't like doughy dough I want to make sure it cooks because it says you can cook for 10 to 15 minutes so I'm gonna do it for 15 I'm just about done so there's an opening there so I'm gonna drop them in on that part the opening where it's bubbling okay and that's all of them in my pot put that in the sink for my dishes to do later I got my chores to do hubby did all the other chores he's such a good person he does a lot of chores Okay, now I'm just gently stirring, but I'm going all the way to the bottom. And don't forget, go in the center of the pot. And I just want to make sure everything is mixed up. And I'm just barely, barely touching the dough. Just because I want to make sure that everything is mixed up and nothing's sticking to each other. That's the reason why you want to do it one at a time. At least this type of recipe. I've seen some other ones where they do the raw and they, it's still kind of sticky moist. I don't know if I like that because almost all of them have the dough in the center that's raw. Kind, kind of raw. Now, I don't care for that at all. Okay, so that's done. Put my lid. Put my lid on. We're going to set the timer for 15 minutes. It's still at a rapid boil. And I'll be back. Okay, here's the pot. I turned off the heat. The timer went off and everything settled. We have a big pot, which is good. But there's the chicken. There's the dumplings. I did add salt and pepper for taste. You add that whatever seasonings you like. There's one of the floating dumplings. Now let me bring you to my bowl. And there's my bowl. I did season it some more with the salt and pepper. I just wanted a little bit more pepper in it. And I did taste it already. And it's got a good, good flavor. But I wanted to show you this, the dumplings. Now these are not really poofy puffy, but then I don't like the poofy puffy ones. Hubby does, so this next batch we're going to make, we're going to follow his recipe and make the dumplings bigger. And then that'll be a different video, just so you can see the different textures, because it's basically up to you. For me, texture seems to be what I do and don't like, more than flavor. So we'll do a taste test. We gotta blow on it, because it's hot. Mm. <laughs> this reminds me of the dumplings you do with your... Um, biscuits, you can, a can of biscuits, you open your can of biscuits or your pie crust uh, and you the refrigerated kind, pre-made kind because it's not really poofy stuff, stuff but the thing that I like about it is let me slice one up for you, I'm going to show you see how the inside is cooked it's not raw and when you do the big, the big puffy ones, mmm, good flavor, good broth. This is a good, keep you warm meal. 
and I'm gonna go because you know what I'm hungry and it tastes really good so this is a thumbs up thank you so much for watching you have a great day and we'll catch you in the next video don't forget hit like share and comment take care now bye bye